Hey everybody, this is Adam Broad of Liberationist Republic High coming to you from the Voluntary Virtues Network. I've got another fun guest this week. I've been having a lot of fun guests recently. Uh, this is Marcel Fontaine. You guys should know him well as the host of The Mind Rebels here on the network. Uh, he's been kind of had to take an unfortunate, uh, unfortunate uh, technological created uh, hiatus from us, but you know we we can't wait till you come back. This is going to be so much fun once you get back going. I know you've got a lot of content that you're going to want to put out for us. Um, so first, I just got to say about this guy, he is one half of the anarchist gay power couple. This dude and his boyfriend are so fucking phenomenal when it comes to post about anarchy. I don't know how he does it, and maybe we'll get to that later on in the show. But uh, welcome, Marcel, and uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about Thanks yourself. Thanks for having me on. Um... I'm, I'm Marcel Fontaine. I'm I've been in I've been um, a libertarian activist since uh, since 2011. I mean like um, I mean like I, I finally got like into like you know politics and stuff like that when I was when I was just 18 because I thought it was my my duty as an 18 year old to uh, uh, to go out there and vote. So I like you know. Uh, I uh, started to actually like have a lot, a little more political, you know, uh, ideologies and stuff like that. Like, and then basically, like, although I was, um, although I was still sort of like leaning, like, uh, I sort of was still sort of leaning a little bit like anti-capitalism here and there because I was like a little bit more of like a socialist here and there. You know, I supported the Occupy Wall Street movement. I, uh, um, although I do do agree with their sentiment with their beginning sentiments i do not agree with with what they did afterwards it's just like that eh. well but that's a whole different discussion but that's um but then like i heard like you know this guy by the name of uh, ron paul and he was for you know ending the mother um, federal reserve the big banks the um he was like you know have like you know uh, he had like the the anti-corporation stance, like anti-corporatism and so like that, like I was actually saying like, wow, this is actually a really good candidate. And then once he actually, like, you know, once he actually said like, we don't have true capitalism, I was like so saying like, hmm, let me actually research this a bit. So I, um, so I saw the video of uh, Peter Schiff going down in Occupy Wall Street and he was actually saying some really good points and I actually liked it. So I, uh, I then became a pretty big advocate for the free market after that and then basically uh i was like on the ron paul campaign i was like you know trying to get that trying to get him in there and once the rnc came i was like uh romney won so i was just like eh, whatever and then i went to uh the the um the uh the third party candidate which was gary johnson and then um and then like he lost, and I was like, uh, I I hate I, I really hate the, I really hate the system. So I was like, you know, looking into anarcho-capitalism and Rothbard, and like you know, I was actually also looking into like you know Ark and Rose, and so with that. And then I uh, went to Anarchy NYC, um, and I and uh, 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 April twentieth, two thousand thirteen, and then I uh, and I was like, wow. Uh, I uh, I actually agree with this shit. So I uh, so I bas uh, so I basically became an anarchist right then and there. It it it, it 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 took me like it took me not too long to just become an anarchist. But but yeah, it uh, it was a it, it's an interesting journey, and I'm still learning. But yeah. So so as an anarchist out in uh, Anarchy NYC, how many windows did you break? How many bricks did you put through car windows? And how many dumpsters did you set on fire? <laughs> We're gonna follow the one. The one None. jerk bag on your more recent purge post, which we'll get to None. later. That's boy, that guy's I, just sad. Um, oh yeah, I also <laughs> went. Uh, um, this uh, my, just a month ago, I actually went to uh, Pork Fest actually, and that's actually a very big experiment of anarchy, and it's a very big experiment of statelessness. And there was um, there was uh, there was no. Uh, the, uh, there was no chaos. There was no, uh, um, there, uh, there was no disorder. It was just like you know, peace, uh, people peacefully, peacefully uh, um, ex uh, coexisting within, like you know, the the harmonious, you know, uh, um, uh, realms of like our uh, our basic ideas. Right, and 
Well, it, so, and it's yeah, all about yeah. cooperation and, and voluntary interaction, which is what I love about Pork Fest. I don't yeah, know if exactly. I'd ever be able to make it out there myself, but uh, you know, stuff like that and the Jackalope Freedom Festival and other such, you know, anarchy camps essentially. Uh, you know, there it's always win-win. You know, even if you're getting the shit bit out of you by bugs and uh, you're taking shits that are way too painful. Uh, <laughs> you know, it's 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 all still yeah. good. Out there. Uh, so all right, so. Yeah, or or not even showering for about a week, but I'll actually like get that. But wouldn't uh, your smell I'll, be aggressing uh, against the noses of other people? <laughs> <laughs> so so you talk about Rothbard and Larkin Rose and, and all those guys. Who of the Austrian and anarchist writers? Uh, who was it that really locked it in for you? Was it Rothbard or did you know like Stefan Molyneux or or Larkin Rose really kick it into you? Um... The the uh, the person who really got me into you know anarchism was uh, was indeed Adam Kokash actually like I uh, I saw his like you know videos I saw what he wa- what he was saying and I was like wow I actually like he actually makes quite well, he makes some quite big big of sense so I. Uh, I, uh, I haven't met him at NRK NYC. I was like, oh my gosh, I was so starstruck. I was like, mm. yeah, awesome. but, yeah. Um, it's it's very it's, it was a very interesting journey for me because like I um, I never really knew what anarchism was until I actually read those authors and actually like you know um, and actually watched Adam Kokash and I was like um, and I was like I actually agree with this. Why should uh, if if humans are f- fundamentally flawed, then why would we want to have flawed humans ruling over other flawed humans? It doesn't necessarily right, make uh, sense. You know, and this might get us uh, in trouble with some of the ANCOM groups, but uh, or even part of our own circles. Uh, you know, hierarchy in a sense of power is never a good thing. Uh, you know, obviously in families, you're going to have somebody who's basically going to be leading the family, usually the father, sometimes the mother. Great, cool, whatever, or in your case... Uh, you or yeah. you know whoever the other man is going to be, who knows? Who cares, right? Uh, but when it comes to the rest of society, we're all on an even playing field. Even if I'm a multi-billionaire, I shouldn't treat you like you're you know some some guy who's living in a box on the corner. You know, just be like, hey, here's a product. You want it? I don't have money for it. Well, here, have a product maybe. Or hey, want a job? You know, that's that's the beauty of the voluntarist system. Uh, yeah, exactly. So. How did you end up getting involved with the Voluntary Virtues Network? I know myself, I was approached by Michael Shanklin, uh, since he knew I had a a now fl- a used-to-be floundering show <laughs> on YouTube, and now it's actually starting to grow again, thank <laughs> God. Uh, how did you get involved? I mean, like, I... I mean, like, I... Uh, uh, um, I mean, like, uh, I was actually also, like, uh, approached to... Uh, um, by Michael Shanklin. I, uh... I met I met him at Anarchy NYC and I also met him at uh, Pork Fest. So, uh, so, so I and he and he basically like you know, um, and basically he sees my posts and he actually and he he laughs his his ass off of, of that at at them and so all of that. So that's just like you know, uh, um, but yeah, like I got I got into that and uh, I set up my wow. show. It was called Born to Liberate. But uh, but unfortunately, due to some te- technological difficulties, I have no means to actually do that show, um, and uh, because like I need I, I need a whole entire new computer because it's just like, eh. but um, but I'll try to figure out how to do that soon enough so I could get my myself back onto the onto the network and actually like you know get my right yeah so and i know you've got a (laughs) is it a gofundme online for uh getting getting computer stuff up yeah it's it's a it's a it's a gofundme i know that i got a lot of flack from uh from a lot of people saying that oh you're just begging and so like that but uh but it's just voluntary if you want to if you want to donate that's fine i'll actually submit the uh the link to uh, to Adam right here. So if you want to like you know um, if you want to uh, donate, you could just you could just like you know um, just donate whatever you can. I have my BTC Bitcoin uh, Addy on there. So if you want to uh, donate Bitcoin, that's fine with me. Um, but yeah, like um, any anything helps. Um, but um, as, as right, again, it's not like you're you're really knocking down somebody's right, door so. saying, "Hey, give me money because I'm going to protect you," or or some other shit status say. Uh, you know, 
And and it's so important yeah. that people in in our <laughs> in our camps, we need to just get together and help our help out our fellow voluntarists and and our fellow anarchists. Uh, I I'm kind of in between checks and stuff like that, and I've got tons of bills, but. Uh, I will be with my next check on Friday, not only donating to you uh, is my plan, plus donating to uh, one of my friends out in Africa. Uh, you may have seen the post on Facebook already, uh, Narigamba Minsubo. Uh, he's a little bit behind on his uh, getting the money for his education. And it's just so important that we get people like you uh, sharing your, your views and sharing the view of, of true peace uh, with the world. And then Narigamba, you know, with the important work he's doing with his yeah. fellow citizens in Ghana, it, it's... It's these kind of things that are so important to me. That's why I want to support everybody I can. And it's we we just can't yeah, continue exactly. to feel like, oh, you're just begging. Who cares if he's begging? If people are willing to donate to somebody who's begging, you know, fuck it, why not? Who cares? And so you you've been you've yeah, been exactly. kind of discussing things over the last boy, what week or two as we've been starting to get to know each other. Uh, you've been talking about how you learned a little bit about some gay history from a book. Was it like the Stonewall yeah. something or other that happened? Oh, it's I um I watched this documentary called uh, Before and After Stonewall. Um, if, if people are not necessarily um, familiar with what um, what Stonewall means, it's um it's basically the Stonewall Inn in New York City. Um, in this in the '60s, there was um, um a lot a lot of gays were basically being arrested left and right um, and and ju- just like you know showing affection on the street you're like you know mom mom they, they classified it as sexual perversion so basically what uh, and they they had like they had like laws ban- banning you know mom gay and lesbian mom books and and like you know, uh, mo- uh, mo- when movies were starting to become a lot more prevalent, it mo- they ba- they basically banned the whole entire ideal of like you know homosexuality and movies. Mo- and e- and even like e- even during the 20s, mo- it, even if you if you, even if you exhibited some signs of that you had like the attraction to, towards the same sex, you were actually put into a uh, insane asylum. And that and um, and uh, um, and what the Stonewall what, what Stonewall actually represents is that that was when um, gay youth back uh, back in the 60s were basically tired of actually being oppressed by the state, and they ba- and basically at first the ATF actually raided um, the uh, Stonewall Inn because they were selling illegal alcohol. And then basically they uh, they were asking questions of who was actually in there because they because the Stonewall Inn allowed you know gays in the uh, um, in their establishment um, and that was not too prevalent in that in that society in that society back in the sixties so basically like they allowed them and then basically once they were like you know su- searching like you know what um, once they were getting information and so like that from like all these gay uh, all these gay people, they were actually being arrested for actually like you know uh, actually practicing it, and they're basically saying like we're basically tired, so we so, so they basically threw threw a riot right at the on the ATF, and they were actually fi- uh, fighting for for their right to actually like you know practice their love, um, regardless what you know my people like you know believed in, and then basically they. Uh, um, and 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 then and, um, and then basically that is what started the whole entire uh, um, gay uh, um, gay liberation in in the United States actually happened. And then basically it, it basically became a lot more prevalent in the 70s and then in the 80s. The uh, although although in the 80s was basically like a really tough time for gays because that was when the age crisis came. A lot of like you know, uh, um, a lot of uh, gay people have been like you know dying of AIDS, and uh, and then basically, uh, um, and then basically in the 90s there was there was a shift. Um, there was a fork in the road, saying that um, whether if we want to start if we, if we want to you know work with government or if we want to say fuck the man. Um, that's um, a, a, uh, unfortunately, a lot of gays actually wanted to work with government in order to uh, to actually achieve the gay rights that um, that uh, uh, 
um, um, that they wanted. But um, but unfortunately, right. The history that the uh, government was actually like you know uh, even in Germany or if you look in like you know Soviet Russia, um, um, uh, homosexuals were actually deemed as enemies of the state and they were actually killed, right? then, um, um, uh, either by firing squad or just by the going to the concentration camp. Um, and it's still kind of prevalent to, to, to even today's society. Like you know some some places in like in uh, Latin America. Africa and even in the middle in the Middle East, they are actually like you know killing gays and so like that. And uh, and at least luckily, luckily for like you know America though, um, I have to say it's a lot more freer when it comes to when it comes to you know gay liberation. But it's but it could but it could be better. We could actually like you know get um, get basically government out of marriage out of everyone's marriage, not just not just like you know homosexuals, right. but even absolutely, heterosexuals absolutely, absolutely. And I, I think couples. I think the big issue, obviously, but, with yeah. the whole things with tax breaks and and insurance legal bullshit and all that kind of fun stuff. That's why there's a, such a push for legal marriage for gays. Well, yeah, but yeah, like you said, if you get marriage yeah, away from the state. Guess what? All of these companies and all these these licensing everything's would be all like, okay, since we can't do anything that has any kind of legal standing with these, let's just let people contractually work together. And the more we break that down, I think really removing marriage from the state is one of our biggest goals for the for our century. Because if we can do that, people will start to realize that they don't need the state for everything, and the state would probably start to break down ideally because of it. At least that. That would be the plan, at least. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. And, uh, um, yeah, unfortunately, a lot of, like, you know, I was even, like, hearing, like, at the doc on the documentary that when the AIDS crisis actually hit, a lot of gays were basically saying, like, health ca care is a human right and so like that. But, um, but unfortunately, though, the politically incorrect truth is that health care is not necessarily a right. It's more of like a service but um but that's just like you know um and that's what i actually like you know about um anarcho-capitalism and voluntarism and uh and even the libertarian the libertarian philosophy in general is that it's not necessarily left or right it's basically like you know liberty it's not necessarily like you know uh it's not is we're not divisible we're basically individualized and so that everyone's an individual in this movement, and that's um, and that's one of the things that I like because like, and that's like you know, because a lot of you know a lot of gays usually like to lean towards the left because they see that they see as they see gay rights being a lot more treated well in the, in the left and so of that, but e even if you look at the history of the left, ma they ma. They have done hor horribly with, um, with protecting gay rights because, um, because number one, um, Bill Clinton actually signed the Defense of Marriage Act and actually put in um, um, "Don't Ask, Don't Tell" in the mili in the military. Although I don't necessarily advocate anyone actually going in the military, but that's um, right, right, and it, but, it's just uh, so if, funny but, because we um, see so many but, people yeah, be so polar, uh, you know, be extreme left or extreme right when both parties we've seen throughout history have been butt-fucking us without our consent, you know, all over the place. And it's not even a fun kind of threesome. It's just so painful. Yeah, they go exactly. in dry, no lube, no nothing. Uh, it's, it's just horrible. It's like what I like to say. Um, the 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 government go um, the government fucks, fucks you in the <laughs> ass with, with uh, no condom and no lube. <laughs> Yeah, they don't even tell you to bite the pillow either. That's just they going dry, man. They going dry. <laughs> so... <laughs> yeah. They just uh, they, yeah they they just they just right. tell you to get down so, on doggy Okay, style this may be something just, we like, may you know, cut out of this right interview in or not. I don't know. Uh, how in the fuck did you find your boyfriend that happened to be so anarchist? Was it something that you kind of molded? Was he already uh, a a Rothbardian type? Or how? <laughs> I, I mean, like I, um, 
um, um, b b b before I actually came out, I was talking to him. Um, I was talking to him about like you know libertarianism and uh, um, ha and like you know uh, how basically the left doesn't necessarily ca care too much about gay rights because like I uh, I was still quite in the closet because like I I knew I knew him for about three years prior to uh, to dating him. So all these three years, I've actually been talking to him and so like that, trying to actually, like, you know, get him to like, you know, this point, this point of understanding. And then basically, uh, and then basically, once I came out to him and we basically started, you know, dating and so like that. That was when I actually, like, you know, escalated a little bit, saying that he could probably, uh, um, um, and and that's what you know, uh, and that was the p p pivotal point that I actually, like, you know. Uh, that, uh, that basically got him more onto like you know right um, that's that, that's onto, badass like, you know, so uh, I, again you know, this might be something and it depends on how you want to go about it uh and i'm very sensitive to you know how interviews want to you know be portrayed for people so this part may be cut too what what was that experience like i know this is probably a question you get all the time you know what what was your reception for when you came out was it was it good was it bad what happened and you don't have to share if you don't want to i'm not going to force you to um, well, uh, well, when I, um, when I was basically like, uh, um, I, uh, uh, I have to, I have to admit that I was, uh, be, be, before, before I ever, like, you know, came out, I was like, you know, uh, I was basically discreetly trying to, you know, have, you know, have some sex because I was like, uh, I can't stand it anymore, but, like, I, I, uh, um, I basically use the dating apps like Grinder and Scruff and stuff like that to meet other guys because they, 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 because because that technology actually provides a lot more like you know uh, a less awkward stance like because like it basically removes the whole entire you know conversation saying that wh whether if a guy is straight or gay it, it kind of removes that because it actually sh makes you it actually search searches uh, um, gays in your local area. And then basically, like, uh, um, and then basically, I started using this app a little bit more. And then, like, um, and then, un and then, unfortunately, though, I actually, like, you know, had an occurrence that, uh, um, that uh, this guy wanted me to uh, stay over. So I didn't know what to say to my parents. So I was like saying, like, I met this friend. I basically met his met, met this friend that I was walking with at night and. Uh, I basically, like, you know, uh, I basically, I basically told a really big lie and so like that, and I slept over and uh, um, and unfortunately, my mom and my sister were actually like gr grinding at me, saying like, "Where were you? Where were you?" And I was like, I was trying to, you know, evade what I was, uh, I was trying to evade the truth, but it was like, oh, I can't, I, I, I have to come clean, I have to come clean. So, I basically told him that I was a little, I was a little curious with my sexuality. So I uh, so I I went out with this with this guy. I basically I basically like you know, had sex with him. And, uh, um, and then basically, like, I told, uh, I told my sister first that, uh, I'm legitimately gay. And, uh, b and I was basically bursting in tears once I actually, like, you know, once I actually told her, told her that. And, uh, and then I told my mom afterwards. But I didn't tell my father yet, because my father was still out. So I, I was, I did not want, want to know what my, my, what my father would actually react, because, because unfortunately, I'm the last one in my family to uh, to concede, to uh, to pass on the family name. So I was a little uh, mom, I was a little apprehensive trying to tell my to my to my dad that I'm gay. And I uh, mom, it, it took me a while. And then once I met Oliver, mom, he actually provided me with that uh, with that security to you know like say like you should definitely like try to come out to him. And uh, and just two days after you know uh, after dating him, I get I got up to the courage and and I said to my mom that I want to tell my dad that uh, that I'm gay, 
and then I uh, and then bas- and then basically I, uh, I, I picked I picked a local diner right uh, right near me um, and uh, because like I wanted to you know have in a public place just in case if, if yelling actually came about I didn't, I want to be secure um, in my own self that uh, um, that uh, that if 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 there was yelling, I uh, a lot of other people would have actually like you know backed me up and so like that. So I wanted to have that security. So and then basically my mom and my sister basically played along and sat and um, pretended that they were actually. Uh, Surprise! Because uh, because my dad doesn't want to be the one to be the last to find out about the stuff. So. I uh, so I worked up the courage. I was eating my I was eating my dinner, and then all of a sudden I just basically said, you know what, Mom, I've come this far. I'm gonna definitely tell him right then and there. So I basically told him that uh, Mom, can I can I speak for a moment? And uh, I said, uh, Mom, I've been lying to you guys Mom, all my life, and uh, I'm gay. And uh, and that was one of the most um, amazing experiences I ever had in my whole entire life. I, um, it was so mentally, it was, it, it was so mentally, um, I was so mentally free that I was like, oh my gosh, finally, finally, I could be myself. And like, I was actually in brink of tears just because that I, um, I was like so relieved. And then basically, I even promised myself that if I, um, if I, if if I came out as gay to my mom to my immediate family, I would come out publicly. And then once I uh, once I came out, I basically went on Facebook and I basically made a really nice status uh, saying that I'm gay, and if you do not support me, that's fine. You can delete me, whatever. Um, and um, unfortunately, I did get yeah, some good. donations, but I got those things, but the majority of I them, hate that I, I have to say that this was a brave thing like. for you to do because it, it really shouldn't have to be that you have to be brave to be yourself. But with the with today's society still uh, kind of in a, in a bigotry uh, mindset, uh, I, I want to thank you for that because not very many people can can do that. It's it, it takes a lot of balls to go yeah. and, and be yourself. You know, I'm. I've kind of got the white male straight privilege that I don't have to worry about that, but uh, you know, it, it's it, it's yeah. impressive, and I and I do appreciate uh, everything <laughs> that you did up to that point because now you're continuing to blossom uh, with not only your own ideals and and your philosophy and liberty, uh, but you're bringing a lot of people to a message that they otherwise wouldn't know, and you you just feel so much more free than you know what I see some of my statist gay friends be when they're still kind of somewhat closeted. Uh, to some of their family members. Uh, so it's just refreshing to see someone who's like me, who just likes dicks. It's awesome. <laughs> so, all right, so we talked about uh, your boyfriend, how you found him, and talked about how you came yeah. out. Um, <laughs> has homosexuality really helped you with your anarchism, or has it really just been a non-issue, or, or kind of how has that come into play? It's it's been kind of like a non-issue, but I uh, um, but once I actually knew, knew a little bit more about the history of uh, of the gay rights liberation movement in uh, in the United States, I um, I actually like you know I said like you know this uh, this is actually uh, my, this could actually be a really good pivotal point to actually mention to uh, to other other you know like status gay is that uh, the state is not necessarily your friend it's um it's more of our enemy not uh mom not uh, something that we should like, you know uh look um, uh, look to for uh for like you know uh mom for like guidance and so right like and it's, it's, it's more, just one of those things you know we both understand why enemy, we were both statists our, at one point in our life we know why people uh, keep going to the state because that's what they're told their whole lives but you would think that people with alternative lifestyles such as the gays oh, or the yeah. trannies or furries or whatever else that may be out there that are yeah, just kind of yeah 
Right. What, whatever happens or to be we'll, your or, thing. Or whatever. Uh, you know, I that, I myself that, personally uh, love free market scary. anarchism <laughs> because I love the idea of trading whatever I want for whatever I want. Uh, you happen to like dicks and want to be able to do whatever you want with <laughs> with whoever you want uh, consensually by contract. That's great, and we need more people like that. You know, if if some guy down the street wants to yeah, be a exactly. minister in some kind of church and he wants the freedom to open up his own church and and preach in a way that everybody else wants him to, great, fantastic. We got Walmart down the street who wants to go and and sell abortion kits or something like that. I think that'd be kind of horrendous, but if that's what they wanted to do, go for it. The market will sort all those bastards out. It's really really simple. Uh, so speaking of sorting things out. What's up, you magnificent bastards? As you know, this has been cut off kind of short, kind of abruptly, it seems like. Uh, so what I want to say is this is a two-part episode now. Um, what I wanted to do is I wanted to split this up because it was, I mean, it was an hour interview. I'm not going to be able to fit that into my time slot, not without potentially pissing some people off, and I don't want to go over my slot too terribly much. I know I've got a little bit of leeway, but I don't want to go over that too much. So anyways, this episode, as you know, has gone up here on the 20th. Of August, the next episode will go up September third. I know this seems a long way away, but <coughs> with the one on the thirteenth being with Red Chambers uh, here in Cape Girardeau, Missouri, and the one on the twenty seventh being a feature of the Atlantic Bromance featuring Chuck the Liberty Geek and Matt, uh, two friends who do gaming videos here on YouTube. And I want to talk about libertarian and gaming, uh, kind of in between some heavier stuff uh, with the homosexuality in the state. Uh, so please check this out. Wait, hold your breath. Hold your breath the whole time while you're waiting for this episode to come up on the 3rd, please. Thanks a lot, guys. So this will be Adam Brass signing off of this episode saying peace and love and liberty, y'all.